Hello guys and welcome aboard to Flagship Medicine. Do you know that feeling when time stops because you can't use your cold and numb hands or you are in such a nightmare pain when breastfeeding? Do you want to be like Elsa from Frozen? Or like Scrat with his acorn playing happily with ice? You are not alone. Let's go on this journey together. Are you ready? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrea from Flagship Medicine and I'm a physician with a persistent dream to bring new and deep insights into various medical topics going beyond the obvious. If you want to be updated with highly researched medical topics, click the subscribe button and bell icon and let's do this together. Today, I'm going to share with you 15 things you should know about Raynaud's phenomenon and I added a little surprise for you at the end of the video. What is Raynaud's phenomenon? A meteorological phenomenon? A medical condition? The name of a former president? Unicorns? Or I don't care? You are right, Raynaud's phenomenon is a medical condition. In 1862, Auguste Maurice de Renault described 25 similar cases of this unnamed disease at that time. I am sure you are wondering what is really happening at the molecular level beyond the obvious. There is an abnormal body response frequently triggered by cold or emotional stress, resulting in the spasm of the small arteries of the acral sites of the body responsible for thermoregulation. Hold on a minute, you mentioned oracle, acral, what? The acral sites of the body are the hands, feet, nose, ears, lips, and nipples. What is the most specific thing about Raynaud's phenomenon? Unmistakably, the right answer is the color triad. White, because of the initial spasm and lack of arterial flow. Blue, due to the cyanosis from blood pooling. And red, because of the reactive hyperemia. What is the pathogenesis of this disease? There is the vascular theory and the neural theory. There are vascular abnormalities, deficiency of vasodilators like nitric oxide and oxygen reactive species, and excess of vasoconstrictors like thromboxane A2 and endothelin 1. There is also increased platelet activation and aggregation that causes liter clots constricting furthermore the lumen of the vessel, and in Raynaud's phenomenon secondary to systemic sclerosis, we have an impaired fibrinolytic system that additionally contributes to the blood clots. There is also neural abnormalities located in the brainstem area responsible for cardiovascular response to acute stressors, that is, the medulla oblongata. There is evidence of deficiency of other vasodilators like calcitonin-gene-related peptide secreted by nerves that supply blood vessels. There is also an overactivity of alpha-2C adrenal receptors that enable cold-induced vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. In Raynaud's phenomenon secondary to systemic sclerosis, there are also increased levels of neuropeptide Y, which is a strong vasoconstrictor. And now, let's level up the science a little bit. Let's look at Poiseuille's law. Cold temperatures lead to formation of intravascular cold agglutinins in people with Raynaud's phenomenon, thus increasing the blood's viscosity. Additionally, vasospasm induces a decrease in the radius of the vessels. Hence, the flow decreases to the fourth power in patients with Raynaud's phenomenon, accelerating ischemia. What triggers Raynaud's phenomenon? The most frequent triggers are changes in relative temperature and emotional stress, but Raynaud's phenomenon can also be triggered by coffee, smoking, beta blockers, vibrations, and prolonged periods of typing. How much time does an episode last? These attacks can last only a few minutes, but they can last also two to three hours. The worst case scenario is the presence of ulcers leading to gangrene and loss of the affected area. How many types of Raynaud's phenomenon exist? There are the primary and the secondary types. 
Regardless of the type, the symptoms are alike. Numbness or tingling of the affected area leading to color changes that I mentioned before, the color triad. The areas become white, pale, numb and cold. The numbness is followed by an unbearable electric fire of pain. The primary Raynaud's phenomenon is idiopathic, unrelated to another disease. It is also called Raynaud's disease. It affects women in their teens and 20s and often have full resolution of the disease at 30 or 40 years old. It affects all fingers symmetrically with the exception of the thumbs. In Raynaud's disease, there is no structural abnormality in the arterial wall at the beginning of the disease. Later, we can observe the thickening of the indima. There is no evidence of necrosis and no history of peripheral vascular disease or ischemic injury. The antinuclear antibodies are normal or negative, and the capillaroscopy is also normal. The secondary Raynaud's phenomenon is also known as Raynaud's syndrome. It affects women in their 30s, and the areas involved are often asymmetric. As the name suggests, it can be secondary to connective tissue diseases like systemic sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, or Sjogren's syndrome, but it can also be secondary to injuries, prolonged vibration, smoking, thyroid problems, and even birth control pills. In Raynaud's syndrome, the patient has digital ulceration or necrosis, there is history of peripheral vascular disease or ischemic injury, the antinuclear antibodies are normal or positive, and the capillaroscopy shows patterns of tortuous capillaries with capillary dropout. And now, let's talk about how can you treat Raynaud's phenomenon. The most efficient and common sense method is to observe and stop the trigger that is causing it. You should exercise carefully, avoiding vibration. It is recommended to do low-impact exercises like walking, dancing, or yoga. I will put a link with detailed information about recommended physical activity in the description box below. You should never stay wet. If you decide to go swimming, please pay attention to the water's temperature. Never touch the floor without some sort of protection. A heated floor mat could be paradise. Wear warm pads, gloves, rechargeable insoles, small blankets to keep handy when needed. And a cat. A cat is always a good idea. <laughs> I will put a link on a detailed approach to clothing in the description box below. What about pills? The doctors can recommend calcium channel blockers like nifedipine or amlodipine to dilate blood vessels so that blood can flow even to the tip of the extremities. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors like Viagra, Botox injections if medication is not indicated, topical nitroglycerin or selective serotonin receptor uptake inhibitors. I don't want to end this video without some words about pregnancy and breastfeeding. I will mention only primary Raynaud's because the effects of pregnancy in people with secondary Raynaud's are strictly related to the disease it is associated with. The general opinion is that primary Raynaud's has little impact on fertility or pregnancy due to the hormonal changes that occur. It may worsen three months after the delivery. Please make sure that your medications for Raynaud's disease are safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. On the other hand, I found an article presented at the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in 2015 that stated, and I quote, Patients with Raynaud's phenomenon appear to be at increased risk for vascular complications during pregnancy, such as hypertensive disorders, emergent deliveries, and poor neonatal outcomes. I will put a link with the article in the description box below. There are also mentions in literature about Raynaud's phenomenon of the nipple as an under-recognized condition. Try to ensure that you can keep as warm as possible when you are breastfeeding. And now, are you ready for the surprise I promised you at the beginning of the video? What are some celebrities with Raynaud's phenomenon? 
The first one on this list is David Goggins, who is, according to his personal website, an American ultramarathon runner, ultra-distance cyclist, triathlete, public speaker, and author. He is a retired United States Navy SEAL and former United States Air Force Tactical Air Control Party member who served in the Iraq War. Alison Levine is the team captain of the first American woman's Everest expedition and one of only 30 people in the world to have successfully climbed the highest peaks on every continent, plus skiing to the both the North and South Poles. And Jenny Falconer, the famous Scottish TV and radio star. Do you suffer from Raynaud's? What worked best for you in managing symptoms? I would love to read your story in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and if you feel you gained value from this video, click the like and subscribe button down below and also the bell icon to be notified immediately when I post a new video.